It's the turn of the 20th century and the city of New York is starting to rise into the sky. Giant buildings are breaking ground and the famous skyline we all know and love is starting to take shape. But this time around, it's you who gets to design the city. Well, you get to try. I have a hunch some other designers are around and they may get in your way. This is Santorini, New York, which was designed by Gordon Hamilton and published by Spin Master Games, who helped sponsor this video. Hi everybody, my name is Nick Murphy of the Brothers Murph, and we are here with BoardGameGeek.com. Well, we've got our workers in order and it's time to design a city, so let's get this game down to the table and learn how to play Santorini, New York. Santorini, New York is a 3D city building game where players will be moving their workers around New York, building skyscrapers and racing to try to fill one of the three win conditions. This game is closely related to the game Santorini and shares some of the same aspects, but instead of god powers, the game revolves around the playing of roll cards and instead of one way to win, there's now three. But that's all getting a little ahead of ourselves. We first need to learn how to set up the game. Place the main game board in the middle of the table where everyone can reach. Then all players, starting with the youngest player, will choose a color of workers and they will place their workers on the starting spaces of the board of the same number. They will also take a player card of their color and put it in front of them. All of the building blocks, rooftops, and skyscrapers should be placed near the board along with the Statue of Liberty. Each game will have four roll cards that will be used. The engineer will always be used and her reference card should be placed next to the board here. For the other three roles, there must be one mover, one builder, and one specialist. It is recommended for the first game to play with the subway operator, the iron worker, and the NYPD officer. Their three reference cards will be placed in their spots next to the board alongside the engineer. Then all the cards that pertain to those four roles will be made into a deck and shuffled. All other cards may be returned to the box. Each player will be dealt five cards from the deck and any remaining cards form a face down discard pile. Now, we're ready to begin. The basic actions the players will take in the game are very, very simple. It's just move and then build. But as I said earlier, the game revolves around the playing of roll cards, which adds many more layers. Now for this rules explanation, I'm gonna explain all the rules with the roll cards that are suggested you play with for your first game. And then after the rules and scoring explanations, we'll then return to the rest of the rolls to see what fun stuff they all get up to. So without further ado, let's get to the gameplay. Santorini, New York is played over a series of rounds until the end game is triggered. Each round is broken down into four stages. First, all players choose a roll card from their hand and simultaneously flip them and place them onto their player color card. The player who played the highest number card will take the Statue of Liberty, which is very important to have. Spoiler alert, only the player who possesses the statue can win the game, but the statue will change each round, so if you don't get it this round, it's no big deal. After the statue is taken, the players will take their turn starting with the player who played the lowest number card and ending with the player who played the highest. Once all players have finished their turns, they will place their roll cards they played on the discard pile and the next round begins. At the end of every four rounds, when all players only have one card left, the discard pile will be shuffled and each player will be dealt four more cards. On their turn, a player must always move and then build. The player will choose one of their two workers and move it to an open neighboring space. A neighboring space is any of the eight spaces adjacent to the worker. When moving, the worker may stay on the same level, move up one and only one level, or because New Yorkers have quads of steel, they may move down any number of levels. After they move, the worker must build. They may build in any of their neighboring spaces and they may build at any level. Though there is a height limit and a building may be a maximum of three blocks and then a rooftop must be built. And note that rooftops cannot be moved onto and can be used to block a player from moving there. You can't just go climbing on people's roofs. I know this is New York, but you're not Spider-Man. Now that is just the basic moving and building, but the roll cards you play will usually affect one of these two actions, giving the player a special ability. Each roll is different and will tell you specifically when it will activate. On each card, there is helpful symbology, but each roll's reference card will be next to the board for easy clarification. If the player played the NYPD officer, they may move into a space within an opponent's worker and force them to move one space straight back. Many roles force other workers to move and note that when a worker is being forced to move, they may move up any number of levels. So you could just strand someone on top of a building. If the iron worker is played, the player must build twice and in two different spaces following the normal building rules. 
If the subway operator is played, the player must move only in a straight line north, south, east, or west, and will move to the first available space, passing through anything in between. Note that any role that allows a worker to move more than one space still may only move a maximum of one level up. And lastly, the engineer activates at the beginning of a player's turn and must build a skyscraper in a neighboring ground level space if possible. Skyscrapers are fully formed buildings and may not be moved or built on, but they're great for blocking. Engineers also have an alternate wind condition, but we'll go over that a little bit later. Players can get blocked in and may be unable to move, and this can cause the player to lose a worker. The player will lose a worker if neither of their workers are able to both move and build, and they may also lose a worker if they're unable to fulfill a mandatory action on a roll card. If a player ever loses both of their workers, they're out of the game. And that, my friends, wraps up the gameplay, and it's time to move on to how you win. A player is able to win this game in three ways. Remember the Statue of Liberty? Well, now she comes into play. Two of the three win conditions require the player to possess the Statue of Liberty to win the game. If the player has the statue and moves one of their workers up to a third level, they will win. Though if the player's worker was forced to move there due to another player's roll card, this does not count. Nor does a player moving from one third level building to another. They must move up one level for them to win. A player may also win if they play the engineer and then build a rooftop while possessing the Statue of Liberty. And lastly, a player will win if they are the only player with workers left on the board. Play continues until one of these win conditions is met, and the player who does so will win the game. So that is how you play Santorini New York with the suggested first play roles. But before we go, let's quickly take a look at the rest of the roles. After the first few games, players may want to start branching out into the advanced roles. Players will always play with the engineer, and then one of each other type of role will be chosen. Let's start with the movers. If playing the taxi driver, the player must move two or three spaces in any direction, passing through anything in between. If playing the tour bus driver, the game will start with one skyscraper already on the board, which was placed by the youngest player. And then when the role is played, the player must move their worker in a straight line to any space that neighbors a skyscraper. Next up, we have the builders. If playing the crane operator, the player must build two blocks in the same space unless they built a rooftop. The Broadway actors are a duo, so when they're played, the player must move and build with both of their workers if possible. When playing the firefighter, before moving, the player's worker must build directly beneath itself, though if they're forced to build a rooftop, they will lose the worker. And the last builder we have is the foreman, who must choose a neighboring worker and must build in two different spaces neighboring that worker. And our final group is the specialists. When the night guard is in the game, players will choose an opponent's worker and that opponent must move that worker if possible. If playing the street vendor, the player will force an opponent's worker up onto the block they just built. The fashion designer chooses a neighboring worker and forces them into the spot their worker just vacated. And last but not least, we have the reporter who will force a neighboring worker north or south to the first unoccupied space, passing through anything in between. That is all the roles in the game, and now you're ready to play. Santorini New York is a new take on the Santorini system. You know which roll cards are in the game, but you don't know which ones you'll get and in what quantity until you draw your cards. And if you think you can win the game, you need to make sure you have the Statue of Liberty. But then you go last, and you know everyone is going to try and stop you. If Santorini New York seems like a game you'd be interested in, make sure to check out its page on BoardGameGeek.com and join in the discussion. And until next time, I've been Nick Murphy. We've been here with Board Game Geek, and that is how you play Santorini New York. Have a great day.